Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the gorgeous Seiko SSA346, also known as the Sidecar. As always, I'll start off by tossing the specs up on the screen for you all to take a look at. Uh, while we've got that information up there, I'd just like to point out that I did get a new microphone, which I'm using for the first time in this video, so hopefully the audio quality is a bit better than in my previous video. Additionally, I've also got some studio lights on the way, so overall production quality should improve greatly here very soon. Alright, without any further ado, let's get into the review. Before we take a closer look at the watch itself, I'd like to take a minute to discuss its background. Back in 2010, Seiko first announced the Sarbo 65 Cocktail Time. This watch was an instant success, offering stunning beauty and an in-house movement at just $550 a combination that could not be found from any other brand at the time. Then, in 2016, to the dismay of Seiko fans worldwide, the Sarbo 65 cocktail time was discontinued. In its place, Seiko announced an entire new lineup of watches, known as the Presage line. Among this line, there was now a whole slew of cocktail time pieces, including the SRPB43, which was a direct replacement for the original. This new cocktail time line of watches included several colorways and models with or without power reserve indicators. I'll go ahead and overlay a few of these watches so you can get an idea of the lineup. I'll put a link in the description of this video as well to a great website that covers every single Seiko cocktail time watch both from the old and new lineups. Getting a closer look at the watch now, we can start to appreciate just how stunning this piece really is. This variant is the SSA346, which has this gorgeous light cream sunburst dial, rose gold plated stainless steel case and hands, and a date complication located at 6 o'clock. Speaking of this dial, pictures and videos simply do not do it justice. This watch plays with light in such stunning ways that it just needs to be seen in person to be fully appreciated. The box shaped hard lux crystal adds to the attractive aesthetic of this watch giving you nice dial distortion at certain angles. Hardlux is a proprietary crystal material made by Seiko, and in my experience is definitely an upgrade from mineral crystal, but still a step below sapphire. Along with the date complication, the dial also houses a power reserve indicator. This can be a polarizing feature for some, but in my opinion it adds just the right amount of extra flair to the dial without feeling cluttered. It's also just a handy complication to have, and one that is very rarely found on dressier watches such as this. Being a dress watch, the crown is a simple push-pull mechanism rather than being screwed down. To wind the watch, you simply twist the crown in a clockwise manner and watch as the power reserve indicator hand begins to move. To set the date and time, you just pull the crown out to the second and first positions respectively, as is standard on most mechanical watches. Flipping the watch around, we get our first glimpse at the in-house Seiko 4R57 automatic movement. This is a very reliable movement from Seiko and well suited for a watch like this. Covering the movement is a mineral crystal. It would have been nice to see a sapphire crystal instead, but it is extremely common for rear facing crystals to be mineral glass, even on much more expensive timepieces, as this side of the watch is almost always protected. Additionally, the use of mineral glass here helps to keep the price of the watch down. Keeping the watch on your wrist is a nice quality brown leather strap with a faux alligator pattern applied to it. Fastening the strap is a rose gold plated stainless steel deployant clasp. This clasp is very well machined and incorporates a pretty clever resizing mechanism that you can see here. Putting the watch on wrist, you can see just how well that it's proportioned. I think its sizing is perfect on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist but can certainly be worn by both larger and smaller wrists. This is a very comfortable watch to wear and hard to take your eyes off when doing so. You will certainly get asked about this watch by others which I believe is always a telltale sign of a piece worth wearing time and time again. This watch can be dressed both up and down making it a very versatile piece and an easy choice to put on your wrist on a daily basis. Getting to my overall thoughts on this watch. I think it is probably clear throughout this video that I'm extremely fond of this timepiece and don't believe that it will be leaving my collection anytime soon. At an MSRP of $650, this watch already punches well above its class. However, this watch can easily be found at third-party retailers for over $150 less than that, 
making it an absolute bargain and quite possibly the best value for your money in the wide world of dress watches. That's going to do it for this video. I hope that you found it both informative and entertaining, and as always, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. I'll be posting another review in the coming week, so go ahead and get subscribed so you can catch that as soon as it's out. This has been Macklin from Macklin's Watch Reviews, and I'll see you in the next video.